Improving health service delivery in Kerama. Landowners give support against eviction. And film on PNG Youth to premiere tonight. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me with Wednesday's news. Health services in Gulf are expected to improve following the opening of new facilities yesterday by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. The new facilities are among other major developments planned by the Kerama General Hospital Board, National Government and the Gulf Provincial Government. Hundreds gathered at the Kerama Airstrip yesterday to witness the arrival of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Health Minister Michael Malabag. Upon arrival, both toured the new facilities to have a glimpse. The new facilities were non-existent for Gulf people to access in the past 20 years. This was proven with Gulf having high records of killer diseases, including tuberculosis. The facilities include new outpatient wards, hospital mass, sewage treatment and accommodation for staff. So we are looking things a little bit different and we hope we can, uh, we can achieve uh, results in, uh, in the near future. Speaking to locals, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said for Gulf, the tuberculosis endemic has pushed the government to improve health standards and types of services people can easily access. Of course, money is there. Money has been made available. It's been transferred to all the departments. It needs to be spent and spent properly for the things that we want. I know you're working under very difficult conditions, but we are trying to make life easier. We are going to get there. With other developments to follow soon, Minister Responsible Michael Malabag called on the hospital board to work with the national health plan so funding can be sourced easily. We are fully implement our national health plan and, you know, put into a good usage the money that has been sent directly to them. For Gulf Province, health services have been neglected in the past. This new infrastructure is said to raise the delivery of services. However, other sectors remain a struggle for Gulf Provincial Government. Do not have good accommodations, no good housing, so that they can be very productive in giving back to the people in Gulf Province in service delivery. Despite opening these facilities, another housing complex is under construction to trigger the recruitment of health workers. Jack Lepave, Jr. National, MTV News. In a separate event yesterday, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Health Minister Michael Malabag witnessed the swearing-in of members of the Kerama Hospital Board. The nine board members were officiated by Kerama Court Clerk Mrs. Alofa Miria. The members include Christian Vinson as, as chairman, Sari Tamasi, deputy chairman, Philip Blanchard, Sudir Guru, Henry Ori, Pastor Dixon Kyrie, Ben Bal, Orilla Pakaya, and Royden Kasau. Speaking on behalf of the board, Chairman Vincent said their priority is to serve Gulf people with better health care. Well, uh, next term is to uh, improve on the services that the hospital can give. Of course, having more uh, building and accommodation uh, available for the staff. I mean, the hospital is like, uh, is like a town, so we need to plan for the next phase. Following government's decision to transfer 33% in equity in Octedi mine back to landowners, landowners within the mine impacted areas have taken it upon themselves to commence awareness on the distribution of this equity. This will involve consultation with villagers directly impacted by this decision. Landowner leaders say although they agree with government's decision to transfer this equity to the people, they want a commitment from relevant government agencies to work together to ensure the transfer of equity is done fairly. What they are entitled to will be paid. Mr. In the August Parliament sitting, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill announced a major shift in landowner involvement in OTML. The government had resolved to give 33% equity to mine landowners in Western Province. This decision has been welcomed. Many years we have been fighting. Now it's time that we should reconcile, forget about the past. We talk about selling the equity properly. And we move forward with the government's decision 
the company's operation. According to Mr. Boon, an awareness exercise will be carried out within mine-impacted areas to explain to the people what their direct shareholding now means. Ours is to go to the communities and get their consent. And then once we bring the consent, the professionals will come and help us guide and develop all these agreements. For the government to be satisfied with the people, and the people are happy, and the mine continues. These villages, these communities, and this tribe have missed out since 1980. They have not received any toy at all as equity because they were disregarded as owners of land where the actual mining is taking place. The United Standby Landowners comes at a time when the province is also preparing to host the Stanley Gas Project, which will provide much needed job opportunities as well as revenue for Western Province. We have many resources that we wanted that resources to benefit within our province. The landowners must be benefit. Merbatulo, National MTV News. The customary landowners of Kaivaga, now known as Morata One in Port Moresby, are supporting settlers to stop the National Capital District Commission from evicting them. Chairman of the Kaivaga Incorporated Land Group, Gaudi Guba, has warned NCDC to leave the customary land alone to the settlers. On Monday, few houses were evicted at Morata One to pave way for a multi-million Kina road project. Today, the Kayavaga customary landowners who sold their land to the settlers gathered with the affected people to address their grievances to the media. The settlers and Kayavaga ILG have identified that NCDC have taken their received landmark for the road construction, including some parts of the customary land where the settlers currently reside. Plenty land grabbing, let me come along all over the the city. Nibla land owners. Nibla wonder why this is something that may me uh, come up long. Skin blow me blah or ground blow me blah. Which is an illegal land grabbing. At the awareness before the eviction on Monday, NCDC assured them that they will be relocated. However, the settlers do not want to move out from Morata 1, where they have been living for the last 10 to 20 years. It's a legally got mountain. It's our home, and we feel that we have no way to go and NCDC I'm all going bully bully on me blah. All the system block court, me play crime, but still police come yet, police come yet. All come long way me blah us away. Me blah go along NCDC and uh, Central Police Commissioner and give me blah pass. Still all these policemen come today, I say now, all still come away. The Port Mosby local land court has issued a court order restraining any eviction exercises to be carried out pending the hearing of the substantive matter in court. However, on Monday they were forced to leave their homes. Grassroots Foundation, a non-government organization which helps youths, women and children to alleviate poverty, presented a 2,000 kina check to the settlers this afternoon. The money will help them to fight the matter in court. I'm a grassroots man. I come from the Nanmal settlement. My eight children has grown up in settlements. Meanwhile, NCD Governor Powe Sparkop will visit the settlers tomorrow to arrange for the resettlement. Basenata Yama, National MTV News. A film about PNG youth in Port Moresby will start showing in cinemas tonight. Written and directed by a Canadian, the film has the universal theme of the boy meets girl storyline, but with a PNG context. Shot in Port Moresby, the making of the film itself brings to light the challenges and the immense potential of making a film about urban PNG. Looking you is the story of a poor boy meets rich girl in Port Moresby. From script to screening, it took nearly four years to complete and Christopher Anderson, the brains behind the film, was fortunate enough to make it back to PNG for the premiere. It's a tremendous relief to have finished it at all. I, I really wasn't sure at all if we were ever going to be able to finish it. Uh, it took a, an awful lot of effort and, uh, and particularly on the part of the cast and crew uh, to bring all this together was just a phenomenal effort. So uh, first, first sensation is relief. 
um, and uh, and second would be um, uh, a little I'm a little nervous about how the how the film's going to be received, but uh, but I'm feeling good. I'm excited. Anderson said one of the many challenges of shooting a feature film in Port Moresby is secure locations. Here people tend to be quite paranoid about anybody using their land for anything and, uh, and so as a result that, that made it a, a real challenge and, um, and we, we had some unfortunate incidents like at one stage a, um, uh, we, we'd, had, we'd sought permission to film in a village uh, which we, we were allowed to do and we filmed there all day but then towards the end of the day we decided to film along the little driveway just outside the village. Now that driveway goes to that village but it also goes to the next village over and a fellow from that village got angry but we were using this driveway and he came out and he uh, chased us off with a bush knife. However when it came to talents he was more than happy with the people he ended up working with. I was extraordinarily lucky to be able to, to meet uh, uh, to meet and find these guys and uh, and, for the, and the effort that they put in uh, to make this film happen was absolutely phenomenal. Tinsi Mao and Godfrey Men Kaptigao are the lead actors in the film. I've always loved acting and uh, theater and everything to do with film and television. So when I heard about, you know, there's like an indie film being shot and like produced, I mean not produced, but like made here, I thought I definitely I, I, I'll, join, uh, I'll join it even if like there's no pay or anything. I just want the experience and cause that was all I really wanted from this. But so I joined up and it was it was it was amazing just going through it. So I absolutely loved it. With the learning also comes the excitement that the film industry in PNG is picking up. In the future we're going to have lots of filming thing going on because mm -hmm. it's the first of its kind. People will see it and they'll be like, oh, okay, the start of something with um, more filming in PNG. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Looking You will premiere tonight at 8 p.m. at the Paradise Cinemas to a select audience and will be open for public viewing tomorrow night. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Welcome back. Karakuhiri MP Peter Isoaimo has again raised concerns that the betel nut ban in Port Mosby has greatly affected his people who have depended on betel nut income for years. He said the National Capital District Commission has allocated an area at Gerahu for his people to sell betel nut, but bringing the nut into the city is difficult. Isoaimo has filed a Supreme Court reference on the betel nut ban for the court's clarification. Yesterday, chiefs and councillors from the Makeo local level government met with their local MP Peter Isoaimo and discussed resolutions on the betel nut ban. Some wanted Berina Station in Central Province to be their central location so that buyers can travel up to buy betel nut. Others wanted NCDC to give central people the right to freely enter Port Mosby to trade at a Motuan village. All their grievances were presented to MP Isoaimo. You know, the problem area here is that NCDC should really target uh, and enforce stricter laws and penalties on boy chewers uh, than sellers because really the sellers only want to make an end meet by selling the boy and, you know, uh, taking the money to buy the necessities and come back home. Mekeo people are the biggest growers of betel nut in Central Province and the NCD. When the extension workers and government offices left Berena Station in the early 90s, the locals stopped growing cocoa and coconut and concentrated on growing betel nut. Their biggest trading and income comes from buyers in Port Mosby. Since 2013, when the ban was imposed, the Makayo people have been seeing lesser income and more risk in bringing betel nuts into the city to trade. Why should NCDC decide for our people all the time? You know? It seems that every time uh, somebody is yelling from the district regarding why, you know, they come up with, with a scheme that, that's beneficial to them. In 2014, Isoaimo brought to the Supreme Court the reference on the betel nut ban. Two years after, and the Supreme Court has set the trial date to October 25th. Since it is a court reference, NCDC and the Parliament Speaker has intervened to challenge the matter. The MP has spent at least 200,000 kina to hire a law firm. Pasenata Yama, National MTV News. 
In news just in, the 7th BSP PNG Games is now deferred to 18th March 2017. This announcement was made this afternoon by Sports Minister Justin Techenko following a deliberation made by the PNG Games Council. Techenko said this decision came after councils from all 22 provinces agreed that prominence should be given to the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup. The PNG Games Council, with the uh, backing of uh, the national government, have uh, decided that the FIFA World Cup, as a world event, needs to be given its prominence, needs to be given um, a standing ovation by itself. We need to promote it and we need to ensure that the world sees Papua New Guinea. Hosting two events, hosting two events uh, at the same time, PNG's biggest event and the FIFA World Cup, uh, will of course lose traction of uh, the FIFA World Cup and also the PNG uh, Games as well. And we don't want that to happen. The Internal Revenue Commission has stepped out with vital community support. Staff of IRC donated personal items to assist the Family Support Centre, which comes under the Port Mosby General Hospital. The Family Support Centre deals with survivors of both domestic and sexual violence. The generous and personal donations of clothing, children's toys, money and other items by IRC staff members were handed over by IRC Commissioner General Betty Palasso. Mrs. Palasso said IRC also works with the Male Advocacy Network Against Violence Against Women and it also supports the Gender Equity Social Inclusion or JESSE policy driven by the Department of Personal Management. What we're doing here today is, is to show the Commission's Internal Revenue Commission support to co the community as well. So we want the community to know that we're not just about chasing after taxpayers to pay in the taxes that are due, but we also care for the communities. The Family Support Centre is part of the Port Mosby General Hospital and comes under the Medical Social Department, headed by Clinical Manager Tessie Soy. The Family cent uh, Support Centre gives five essential services. The first one is psychological first aid, but the second one is actually to prevent HIV AIDS. So if you come within 72 hours of being sexually abused, raped, you can, we can actually prevent HIV. And then we also prevent uh, pregnancy, prevent uh, hepatitis B, and we also prevent tetanus. So, you know, those are very important um, services we're providing and we really would like survivors to know that, that they can come to us. With the donation, what we can do is uh, assist with bus, bus fares and also like the clothes and that will go a long way. Yeah. Okay. The Family Support Centre was established in 2004, but it only started including vital medical interventions in 2014. It provides vital support for survivors of intimate partner violence as well as victims of sexual abuse like rape and child abuse cases. I'd like to thank everyone else who's been supporting us all, um, all this time. Like we had a donation from All Nations Women uh, and we also had an, a donation. Uh, we've been having continuous donations from City Pharmacy. Um, so I'm, I would like to say thank you to all those who have uh, and those who I may have forgotten. But, you know, to IRC and with the donation that we've got today, I'm really, you know, I'm really happy and elated that the government departments can do this because it, it's showing a sign that they're in the fight against, you know, uh, G GBV, gender-based violence. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. The autonomous region of Bougainville is hosting the 8th NGI Regional Nurses Christian Fellowship. The fellowship, held under the theme Partnership with the Holy Spirit, Compassion the Cornerstone of Care, has united nurses from the New Guinea Islands provinces with the autonomous region of Bougainville. This morning, all the nurses marched to the Bell EC Park with the message of how important nursing is in the medical sector. The nurses in Bougainville also paid homage to retired nurses who, for the last time, joined them in this important gathering. 
The upgrade of Yarrawarri High School to secondary status has been challenged by many factors. School principal Andrew Moava told MTV News, despite this, the school administration is on its toes to provide accurate guidance for its pioneer grade 12s. Principal Moava said delays in government TFF fees has been the major setback in building the school's infrastructure. The Yarrawari School was established in 1982 as a convention institution. However, over the years, it is transformed to a high school. In 2014, plans to upgrade to secondary status was announced and the process was followed and executed. This year, Yarrawari will witness the graduation of its pioneer grade 12s. However, school principal Andrew Moava says there is little to no support needed to see the transformation of the school's status. Funding is difficult, it's quite difficult because we are more reliant on the, the TFF and TFF is not coming good and it consequently affects our operations here. Little intervention by political leaders, government funding and parent support has resulted in the construction of the eight classroom complex. However, more specialist buildings are needed for year 11 and 12 lessons. Our vision is to convert the school to become a multi-purpose educational institution where it would eventually provide uh, trade skills. That means uh, more specialized in agriculture and uh, that's providing TVET. In his fourth year as school principal of Yarrawari, Mr. Moava says learning is the priority for the school administration. However, proper facilities must support this process. Obviously, when we prepare a child to meet the outside world, we must make sure that the attitude to work and learning is right. And also they know, they must know what is outside. And with the principal and the guidance, we must prepare the kids well so that they can uh, make a wise decision. We will help them to make a wise decision. This school currently has 569 students with 33 teachers and is now a level nine education institution. The school administration is calling on the government, local MPs and any other interested organizations to help grow the school as a premier institution in the country. Jack LaPave, Jr. National, MTV News. Telecom PNG has announced that its high-capacity network is now complete with all links carrying live traffic to offer a more efficient and reliable network for its retail and corporate customers. Resource companies operating within the LNG corridors together with remote and rural communities in the rugged terrains that rely heavily on satellite communications can now have access to this national transmission link. The first phase was made operational before the 2015 Pacific Games to carry all the free Wi-Fi traffic. In July, com co communication links in the highlands were migrated onto the HCN with positive feedback from telecom clients in the region. Priority now is the completing of the microwave link between Lei and Medang to complete the microwave ring. The government of the Federated States of Micronesia has formally approved the foreign air carrier permit to national flag carrier Air New Guinea for flight services to commence on December. President of the Federated States of Micronesia, Peter Christian, described this agreement as a practical sign of how cooperation between the Pacific Islands Forum members works for the real benefit of member countries. President Christian says he will further discuss with Prime Minister Peter O'Neill during this week's forum meeting in Pompeii. And you're going to begin its special services to the Federated States of Micronesia Tuchuk and Fonpe last week. And you can hear both Chairman Sir Frederick Cryer led a delegation and met with the FSM government and Chamber of Commerce in Fonpe. In that meeting, FSM President Peter Christian approved the foreign air carrier permit for Air New Guinea to begin its twice weekly commercial air services in December. President Christian said the FSM government and the business community is fully supporting Air New Guinea for this service to continue. The FSM government has chosen Air New Guinea to provide regular services given that Port Mosby will be the Pacific's leading regional hub and with a lesser traveling time to other Pacific Island nations. Sir Frederick said Air New Guinea will work closely with the FSM government 
to ensure the new service is a success. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Meanwhile, Air New Guinea Board Chairman Sir Frederick Raya says the new routes under consideration include Shanghai, China, Jayapura, Indonesia, Townsville, North Queensland, Australia, Tarawa, Kiribati, and Majuro Marshall Islands. This is a major expansion of Air New Guinea's presence in the Asia Pacific. And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3155 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3080 US dollars, 0.3981 Australian dollars, 0.2708 Euro and 31.08 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold, coffee and copra closed higher while cocoa closed the day lower. Crude oil and copper closed lower while palm oil closed the day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 5 points higher, the ASX is trading at 256 points higher and the All Ordinaries is trading at 26 points higher. You're with National MTV News, more local and international news when we come back. Welcome back to the news. Lay police have recaptured two suspects who were among 96 other escapees during the mass breakout from Buimo in February this year. The suspects are Samuel Ben, 17 of Morbe and Simbu Parentage, and Richard Anton, 24 of Morbe and Central Province. Anton has been accused of several robberies, break and enter, and stealing over 75 horsepower outboard engine from the Huan Gulf District Administration. They have been arrested, charged, and locked up at Buimo Jail. Lay Metropolitan Commander Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi says it's known that most crimes are committed by SKPs. Wagambi appealed to the general public to assist police with any information in this regard. The debate on the current discussion on the rice policy between rice companies and the government is very important. Chuka Industries, one of the longest rice companies in PNG, is taking this policy very seriously when it comes to protecting rights and employment of its employees. Chief Executive Officer Greg Worthington made these remarks during the company's award presentation to its longest serving employees. Chuka Industries employs over a thousand Papua New Guineans, and majority of them are based here in Leh. There are over 550 employees working across three shifts, engaging in the packaging for the Chukai and Roots Rice brands. Um, and so our employees are very important to us. Apart from the company's other benefits, they also recognized employees who have been in the business for more than five years. Yesterday, during the company's quarterly get-together, 13 employees were recognized for their service with the firm. The awardees are awarded in a five-year block, starting off with the first award service of five years and then going to 10, 15 and longer and I'm looking forward to giving my first 40-year uh, award out in five years' time to Anne. Um, so that'll be a tremendous milestone for the business when you consider that we are, uh, at this stage, 46 and a half years old. 54-year-old Philip Nasusu is one of the awardees. He is the second longest-serving employee. This year is his 30th year with the firm. Since the time he joined the company, he has seen the business grow from a small industry to PNG's main rice firm. He acknowledged the company for recognizing the time, commitment, and dedication he has given to the firm. Matalubis, National MTV News, Lay. The United States looked to highlight positive elements of the U.S.-Philippines relationship yesterday following comments made by newly elected Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte, which resulted in the U.S. calling off a bilateral meeting between the two nations. Duterte for, sought to defuse a row with the United States on Tuesday, voicing regret for his controversial comments against President Barack Obama. 
The tiff between the two allies overshadowed the opening of a summit of East and Southeast Asian nations in Vientiane, Laos. It also soured Obama's last swing as president through a region he has tried to make a focus of U.S. foreign policy, a strategy widely seen as a response to China's economic and military muscle flexing. Obama's deputy national security director, Ben Rhodes, told reporters the U.S.-Philippine relationship remains rock solid, adding that people should certainly expect that the U.S. very close working relationship with the Philippines to endure. However, Rhodes also said the focus on Duterte's comments leading into the summit had not created a constructive environment for a bilateral meeting. All of the attention, frankly, was on those comments um, and therefore uh, not on you know, the very uh, substantive agenda that we have with the Philippines. Um, so uh, again, given that focus, we felt that it wasn't the uh, right time to have uh, a bilateral meeting between the two presidents. Officials from both countries said there would be no formal meeting rescheduled in Laos, but a short conversation between the two presidents was possible. Instead of the Duterte meeting, Obama held talks with the South Korean president a day after North Korea fired three medium-range missiles into the sea. He urged a full implementation of sanctions against North Korea, adding that the missile test demonstrated the threat that Pyongyang posed. Obama is also likely to hold an unscheduled meeting in Laos with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to discuss North Korea. Rhodes said Washington needed to maintain a sense of urgency within the international community on sanctions against Pyongyang. Lorraine Gabina, MTV World News. The Vietnam War is long over, but millions of unexploded bombs in neighboring Laos continue to kill many people to this day. The United States has announced a pledge of $90 million for Laos to help with the removal of unexploded bombs, the painstaking effort to rid the country of its deadly legacy. Ye Yang wasn't even born when the secret war in Laos ended more than four decades ago. But he carries its horrific legacy. In 2008, life was good. He was 22, engaged and had a job. Until an undetected bomb tore it all apart, exploding as he was burning trash. I don't remember anything until I woke up in hospital two weeks later, he says. When I saw what had happened, I didn't want to live anymore. Ye is one of an estimated 20,000 victims, many of them children, who've been killed or maimed by unexploded ordnance since the end of the war. For nine years, until 1973, the US carpet-bombed Laos, trying to stop a communist insurgency and smash North Vietnamese supply lines. It was known as the secret war. No American boots on the ground, just American bombs. More than two million tonnes of them rained down. Per capita, more explosives were dropped here than on any other country in history. None. And they're still exploding today. This is a controlled detonation by the Mines Advisory Group, which works in Laos to clear the bombs, literally a few square yards at a time. Every patch of land has to be mapped and then swept. Once detected, they zero in on the object and uncover it. And this is what they usually find, cluster munitions known locally as bombies. Up to 80 million of these failed to detonate, and just 1% of them have been cleared. How long, realistically, with the resources at the country's disposal, is it going to take to make this country safe? Currently, with the, with the resources, um, I'd, I'd say decades. Decades? Yeah. And that is one more explosive device taken out. But across these plains, across these valleys and across these mountains, there are still tens of millions of threats remaining. <laughs> Those threats are what worries Ye Yang more than anything else that his own children, born after the accident, could suffer the same fate that he did. 
Chukai Sports is next. We'll have football, taekwondo and rugby league. Stay tuned. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Papua New Guinea's hopes of qualifying for the World Cup is now out of sight after going down to Vanuatu 3-1 to on match day 2 in Port Vila late yesterday. Meanwhile, host Vanuatu and New Zealand have secured spots in the 2016 OFC and the 20 Championship semifinals with both teams a game to spare each. Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu were desperate to keep their dream of qualifying for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup alive. Were goalless in the first half, but a red card to PNG's Kenneth Pilailo four minutes after the restart changed the nature of the match. Vanuatu's Ronaldo Wilkins stepped up to convert the resulting penalty. Then within six minutes of playing time, the home side skipper Boncalo got the crowd on their feet with a sensational volley to double the lead. Papua New Guinea with 10 men refused to lay down and with persistence and hope, Gabi Yanom bundled the ball over the line from a 77th minute corner. However, Jason Thomas crushed those hopes with Vanuatu's third in the 81st minute. That goal ultimately confirms a victory that sends the whole side straight into the semi-final. And for PNG coach Peter Gunemba, there were mixed emotions after another close game that got away. We're quite happy. Uh, we are going out happy because of this, especially because of this performance. Like I said, we were gonna, we were confident we were gonna beat Vanuatu. We watched them; they played very hard, uh, hard against Fiji, but we know how to uh, tackle them and win the game. But uh, you know, we feel you know totally downhearted because we ourselves are the cause of this game. So we have to we, we have to blame ourselves. In the other matches, defending champions Fiji gave themselves a chance of reaching the semi-finals with a 1-1 draw against previous group leader New Caledonia. In Group B matches, New Zealand defeated 10-man Tahiti 4-1 to book a semi-final berth, and Solomon Islands eventually wore down a resilient Cook Islands to win 3-0. Group A will conclude on Saturday with Fiji facing on Papua New Guinea at noon and New Caledonia squaring off against Vanuatu at 3 p.m. local time. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. The FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup has received support from national flag carrier Air New Guinea. General Manager Customers and Markets Dominic Calmo says Air New Guinea will support with air travel discounts and other promotional activities. In a recent meeting with FIFA officials, Mr. Calmo said Air New Guinea was honored to be associated with the renowned international football tournament. FIFA Head of Women's Football Tatiana Haeni thanked Air New Guinea's support will make a strong contribution to the success of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup across Papua New Guinea. Taekwondo associations in Port Mosby approached MTV Sports today to voice their concerns over the unfair selections for the Code of Taekwondo to represent NCD at the, at the PNG Games in Kimbe. They said they have wasted their time and effort with their athletes to train hard and prepare for the Games. Presidents of respective Taekwondo associations in Port Mosby spoke to MTV Sports today, raising questions to find answers, hoping that by bringing their concerns to the media, they can help settle the problem to save any inconvenience for future events. Their complaint is based on what they described as unfair selections to select athletes for the code of Taekwondo to represent NCD at this year's BSB PNG Games. Everybody obviously wish that we could run a selection and reselect the team. Uh, however, we feel that you know a uh, precedent should be set. We should be out here, uh, say, you know, voicing our concern, and that this shouldn't be repeated again. Accompanying Mr. Kasman to MTV was his fellow Taekwondo presidents, who also spoke on behalf of their associations after they were questioned by their own athletes as to whether they were going to attend the games or not. The Jamuga Stone doing the selection, he didn't follow the process. He just went straight on and said, "You, you, you in the team." Are they good in training, good in fighting? Do they have the mind, mindset of the game? 
I, I'm more concerned about my, my, my student um, right to compete and be selected to uh, compete at the uh, uh, PNG Games. It's, it's really unfair. What I think is that why are clubs in NCD, I mean, why, why do we form clubs in NCD and train them for? Train them for games like this. It should be a fair, fair selection, huh? have a fair trial, and then whoever is selected will be able to represent uh, NCD. They said they are now left vulnerable with only two months to go before the games. It is unclear now what or how they can solve the problem. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. And just a reminder, the PNG Games have been deferred to March of next year as, de as announced by the Sports Minister. Last weekend saw the SBPNG Hunters bow out of the 2016 Interest Super Cup season when they lost to the Sunshine Coast Falcons 18 points to 12. Following the disappointing loss, the Hunters now plan to take a break, reflect and prepare to come back better and stronger next season. The Hunters have always been consistent performers in the Interest Super Cup in their three years in the competition. This season has been no exception which saw the Hunters depart the competition in the first elimination finals of the 2016 season. Although disappointed by their loss, Butler Barnes believes it has been a good season for the team all round and they can aim to improve next season. Um, that's rugby, you know, one team has to win and one has to lose. You know, we accept the fact that we lost the game and we're looking forward for a better, better game next year to come and better, better team and stronger team next year. Yeah. It hasn't been the best season for the team with a number of key players struggling with injuries throughout the competition. Uh, for myself as an individual, uh, it was a really tough season for all of us and for me, like, um, uh, I had a lot of injuries. Uh, this year, so yeah. But all in all, it was a great season. I'm really proud of my, the performance of the boys and the coaching staff. Uh, at least we came into the finals and we gave it all we got. But at the end of the day, you know, they were a better side. So, yeah. so yeah, I'm proud of the boys and uh, of myself too. The SPPNG Hunters this season have seen young stars emerge in the likes of Justin Olam, who has signed with the Melbourne Storm in his debut season which sees the Hunters continue to provide the platform to expose raw talent that Papua New Guinea has to offer. Dion Kombeng, National MTV Sports. More on the SBPNG Hunters after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. The SBPNG Hunters went around the nation's capital today thanking their main sponsors. They presented signed jerseys to their sponsors, thanking them for their support throughout the 2016 season. They started at the Huawei outlet inside the Vision City shopping mall, where players got to meet their fans, take photos and hand out posters. <laughs> Then an official presentation of the Hunter's signed jersey was held. <laughs> the players were lucky enough to have been given a phone each. Yeah, no, the, uh, I actually got all the, uh, the free phones in my room, so I'll, I'll go back out there and, and make sure they give everyone, uh, all the players that attended today, all their phones. And, but yeah, now uh, the coaching staff probably get one each if there's uh, leftovers. We've given uh, uh, 26 of them, so yeah. After Huawei, the team headed down to the Naked Fish to present the National Gaming Control Board with their framed jerseys. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hunters addicts were presented NGCB CEO Imelda Agon with the 2016 Kumus jersey, while Henry Noki gave the Hunters jersey. Uh, no, just today was just about uh, going back, meeting uh, our the sponsors. Because we, we go there, present uh, uh, their jumpers okay, instead of doing it uh, during the awards night. So uh, good to see uh, uh, not only the bosses but their, their employees as well. So uh, we did a few companies today, so it's really good. The hunters will continue tomorrow visiting other sponsors before their presentation dinner on Saturday. Elijah Lavet, National MTV Sports. And that ends True Kai Sports. Your weather details coming up next. Stay tuned. Kai Sports.
The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Fine although cloudy at times in Port Moresby and Daru. Chances of rain showers in Kerama. Rain then clearing in Alotau and Popandata. In the Mumase region, rain showers in Leh. Few rain showers then clearing in Medang. Some passing showers in Wewak and some rain showers then clearing in Vanimo. In the islands region, few rain showers in Loringau, few thundery rain showers in Kaviang, some rain showers then thunderstorms developing in Kokopo and Rabao, few passing showers in Kimbe and some thundery rain showers in Buka. And in the highlands region, rain showers then easing in all centers. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Now recapping our main stories for tonight. Improving health service delivery in Kerama. Landowners give support against eviction. And PNG Games deferred to March 2017. And that's been the news, sports and weather for tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Helen Sayre. Pleasant viewing. Good night.